Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to create a shader. Now, a shader is a small program that is run on every single pixel in the in your in your room or in your game or technically in whatever texture you pass into it. But in this case, it's going to be a background that we're going to pass into it, and it will run this small program in every single pixel of that background. Shaders are very powerful, and I'm really excited to get started, so let's do just that. We're going to need a little bit of setup work. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create we're going to create a new background, a new object, and a new room. Okay? For the room, just name it room test, and I'm going to make it 640 by 360. And for the object, just name it object test. And that's all we need to do for the object, except we also want to put the object in our room. So click on the object, place it in the room. It doesn't matter where, it's in the room. Okay, now we have a background, so we're just going to call this background test. And I'm going to load a background, and um, let's see. I'm going to grab. I'm just going to grab a background from Grain War here. There's one. That one's too big, though. I, I have another one in here. I can't see it right here. No, that's not it. I have another one in here that is uh, not that big. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, perfect. This is 640 by 360, which is the width and height that our room is. So that should make it easier. Okay, so we're ready to start programming our shader. So come up here to the top and you can see right next to the scripts on the right hand side. So in between scripts and timelines, there's a create new shader. So we're going to click on that. We'll create a new shader. And this is what our shader looks like, the default shader. And I'm going to name this shader shader green for now. So there's two tabs inside of this window. There's a vertex shader and there's a fragment shader. And we're not going to worry about the vertex shader um, because this is just the very basics. We're only going to talk about the fragment shader. But that's okay because you can do quite a bit with just a fragment shader. So let's look inside here and see what we have. Well, we've got these two... Um, we've got these two varying vectors up here at the top. A vector is a it's a variable with more than one value. So this vector 2 technically has two values and since this is the texture coordinate this is going to be an x and a y value um, which is going to be the position of the pixel basically. And then this right here um, is a vector 4 which means it has four values and you can see it is uh, a color which is going to be a red, green, blue, and then an alpha. So it's going to have four values included in this vector. And this represents whatever color you are drawing your texture at. So we're going to pass in the texture, which is going to be the background, and it's going to run the shader on that background on every single pixel. And whatever we're drawing that background, whatever color we're drawing that background at, is going to be the color that exists inside of this variable. So it could be the image blend of the object. It could also be uh, if you were to draw the background with a specific color, like a white or a black. That's what this color is going to be. But we don't really need to worry about it. Now we've got this void main function right here, which uh, this is just the function that will actually run on every single pixel. And all it does is we have um, GL frag color equals, and then the color that we're drawing this as, which doesn't really matter because we're not going to change that color. So technically, for this example, we can take this out. We don't even have to worry about it. And then we have um, that this function right here, texture 2D and GM base texture 
and the text coordinate. So this right here returns the color of that pixel. So this is the output of the pixel and this is the current color of the pixel. So right now this shader does absolutely nothing. It just grabs the current color of the pixel and then sets that to be the output, the output for the new pixel. So let's make this more interesting. First of all, let's create a new variable. Now we're gonna create a variable that's another vector because this right here First of all, our GL frag color, this takes, this is a vector four because it's a color, so it has all four values. And this returns a vector four because it returns the red, green, blue, and alpha value of the current pixel that we're on. So we're gonna create a new vector four, so vector four. And this is going to be, we're gonna name this vector four. Um, so we're declaring that this is a vector four, just like when you declare whether a, vec whether a variable is global or whether it's local, like var i equals whatever, we're just declaring the type of this variable. So we're going to do, we're going to just uh, call this original color. And we're going to copy this right here. Control X. And we're going to do original color equals control V. Oops, there we go. So this right here get the original color of the pixel it just gets the original color of the pixel using whatever texture we feed into the shader at whatever coordinate that we're currently on since we step through each pixel this coordinate is going to change depending on which pixel we're on so that's pretty easy uh, we got the original color Let's create a new vector four that's gonna be the output color that we want. So we're gonna do vector four equals, well, vector four color equals, and then that's gonna be whatever we're gonna set it to. And then at the end, we're gonna set our GL frag color to color. So we're gonna, we're gonna create a color here and we're gonna set our our um, output to that color. Now we could create a color, um, we could do vector four and then pass in the four values. This creates a new vector just like this. And we could pass in um, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, and 1.0. Right, so we could pass in a color, but then this is just going to, I think this is white, if I'm not mistaken, it's either white or black. Uh, I'm not sure which, but that is just going to, I'm not sure which off the top of my head, I'd have to check. But that's just going to set our entire background to either white or black. I think it's white. So that's not very useful, right? We don't want to change our background into just a black thing. We can do that without a shader. So uh, let's create a different color. Now vectors, you saw that I put you saw that I put 1.0 on these instead of just one. That's because vectors take float variables, which means these have to be decimals. I can't put a one in here or I will get an error. It has to be 1.0. It has to be a decimal or a float. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own, which is going to be, let's get, let's create a new float, float, and we're going to get a green, the original green value of our color. So we're going to do green, float green equals original color dot G, which is going to get the green value of our original color because this is a vector, so it has four values. How do you get a specific value from the vector? Well, they have this nice little dot notation where you can get specific colors. Dot R is red, dot B is blue, and dot A is the alpha. So we're going to get dot green. So we're getting our original green color right here. Um, let's create a red and a blue color as well. So float red equals, I'm just going to do 1.0, actually 0 0.0. And then we're going to do float uh, one's all the way across might actually be black. I don't remember. It's not really that important. You could test it to see what it actually is. So we're going to do a blue value of zero as well. 
And we're going to do an alpha value, float alpha of 1.0, right? Now that we have all four values, we can pass these values into our vector. So let's create our new vector, so vector 4, and then you do parentheses and a semicolon like that. We'll pass in red, green, blue, alpha. So what does this shader do? Well, we get our original pixel color. And then what we do is we get the green value from the original pixel color. And then we create a red and a blue value that are just zero. And we pass all those values into our new color, which we're going to output right here. And so we're going to get the original green value, which is going to be uh, some value for, for our green value, and then set everything else to zero. So this is going to give us a green shader. It's going to change the entire background into a green color. Now it's not going to be perfect, but it's a great basic shader to kind of teach you about the basics. So um, we can just name this create the new color and we'll show this as output the new color, right? Okay. Now our shader's created, it's ready to use. Let's, uh, let's actually draw the background using our shader. So inside of our test object, we're gonna create a draw event, a new event, a draw event. We're gonna go to control, we're gonna drag over a new code action. Draw the background with the shader. So here's how you draw a background with the shader shader this is the most basic way to do it a lot of the times you'll run your shader on a surface so you'll draw everything onto a surface and then you'll run the shader on the surface but you can also do it this way it's simpler that's why i wanted to do this first shader green draw background bg test we're just drawing it at position zero zero and then after you do that you call shader reset so you do shader set, which sets the shader. You draw the background inside of there, and then you reset the shader. And that's all you need to do. Now let's run our game, see if it works. Hopefully I got everything right. I just started learning about shaders recently, so I'm still learning. Uh, but as you can see, it draws that background, this original background right here. It just draws it completely green. So we've greenified our original background. Now, why can't you just pass in a green value of 1? And why do you have to get the original green value? Some people might wonder that. And it's really good to mess around with shaders because they're kind of tricky and messing around with them is a good way to learn. Well, if we just pass in a green value of 1.0, all that's going to do is it's going to draw a perfect green value all the way across our room, which just makes our room green, right? Which is useless. So, but really quickly, I'm going to do a, an example of a... Uh, a black and white shader as well. Now, a black and white shader is, this isn't a perfect one. And I actually got this one from some written tutorials done by uh, Zor or Xor. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'm putting a link to his Twitter page. And he, did, he wrote up a bunch of tutorials that are all really great. They help me learn about shaders and they can help you too. So go check those out. I want to give him credit for that. Uh, but I thought a video tutorial might be a good way to get people started. So, so we're going to do a, a, a black and white one. This, this isn't a perfect one, but it will work. So the way we can do that is we can get the red, green, blue values of our original color. And then we can get their average and make that, that one value, the average for the red, green, and blue values, the same for the red, green, and blue value of the new color. So we're going to, instead of doing, um, instead of having a float that is red, green, and blue, we're going to get rid of those, and we're going to do a float that is average. Av average. Okay, if I can spell it. And what we're going to do is we're going to do average equals, I'm going to change our original color variable just so it says OC for original color. The reason is because I don't want to uh, type originally co original color out. So we're going to do parentheses oc dot red plus oc dot green plus 
OC dot blue. Okay, and we're going to divide by three because that's how you get an average is you add all three numbers together and then you divide by three. And this is, this is funny because I recorded a different video that I even uploaded where for some reason I was trying to times them, which doesn't make any sense, but that's what, hap that's what happens when you're recording yourself programming, right? It's really easy to make a mistake and uh, look like a fool. So, <laughs> but I decided to re-record this video. So that's how you can get the average right there. And uh, then in our new color, we'll just pass in average. So we should be able to pass in average, average, and average right there for our red, green, and blue values. So now when we run our shader, I'm actually name it shader black white right there. And shader black white there we go so we've got our new shader I just renamed it so it makes more sense we can run our game again and it should uh, as long as we typed everything incorrectly oh I know what I did so uh, I'm telling you you have to remember that these are all these are all uh, floating values so you can't these are floating values they can't um, be divided by an integer which is just a value that doesn't have a decimal so this has to be 3.0 like that and it's an easy mistake to make um, you'll get an error if you don't do that and there you go it uh, turned it into a black and white shader the reason this one's not perfect is because some of the values are going to be a little bit darker or lighter than they're supposed to be um, doing it this method and like I s in in the description um, Zor or XOR I think it's probably XOR he talks a little bit more about how you can do this in a more accurate way so you can check out those those tutorials but that's all I wanted to do for this tutorial thank you for watching be sure and like this video and share it on Twitter because uh, there are a lot of people who want to learn about shaders but don't really know where to go. So this is a great starting video and then they can read some of the written tutorials as well. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate your support and I will talk to you guys later.